let's move to the solutions because i think anyone who's come to watch this video will want to know what the solutions are mm. and personally you we've both mentioned it now it's got to be an air purifier <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. You were just dying to I talk about dying. that bloody air purifier. I'm, my air purifier. My, my Honestly, if you to be fair, I like I took the piss out of you a lot mm. when you started with the air purifier because you're such a gadget person and I am not a gadget person. But to be fair, it actually makes such a difference. Mm. And particularly when Rivi was born, because you know, babies um kind of air passageways are so tiny and like any little speck of anything can irritate them it really helped having that on at night as well oh but so, anyway yeah, go yeah explain your purifier and then we'll pick it up so i came across an air purifier it got a mention in conversation one day and mm. i thought oh yeah we have a mint the pollen filters in the vehicles like put mm. one in, in the home so i bought this and i've got a couple of them now we've got a couple in the office we've got a couple at home mm. and if during allergy season I'll, I'll like have my face in front of this just breathing in the fresh air and obviously the one of the big things i will say to people is you need to change the filter on these like at least once every month change the filter i know they say you can change it like every three or four months but i would change it sooner rather than later particularly during allergy yeah. season like when it's working harder for you but do you know what I, I, and, and what i'll do for that air purifier that i'm using because I, I bought one i've tried it, I've tested it and I found it quite beneficial I'll stick the link for it in, in the description it's literally available on Amazon it's quite it's actually about 50 quid I think so it's not actually breaking <laughs> the bank or anything like that but that really helped with kind of purifying the air around at night time <laughs> especially when we're sleeping and in the heat it was just incredible <laughs> but do you know what really really helped <laughs> was the humidifier you know it's just just keeping think? the humidifier really helped i felt because we tried it with rivi mm. when you know with her chest and her breathing and we it really helped kind of soothe her soothe her mm. like breathing except during the summer months because the dry heat yeah and so i, I mean i don't get really helped. like uh, you know my past aside with the place that i am with my health i don't yeah. really get the kind of chestiness uh chesty issues with uh, pollen even in the height of pollen season anymore yeah. um, but you definitely it triggers like asthma in you so if you think the humidifier I guess again yeah just keeping everything nice and moist because it, it's the moisture that I found so like mm. the the, the, the purifier was really great for that purpose of it but the humidifier just to put that moisture in the air with the dry heat was mm. I felt was really mm. really powerful they're my like first go to's but I think one of the easy solutions uh, is and like it's tough, but just washing your face when you come back in and washing your hands and changing your clothes. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I still um, really rate some of those kind of classic hay fever recommendations, like having a proper shower, letting the water run over your face, through your hair. I know it's annoying, ladies. <laughs> Because I do not want to wash my hair every single day. It's a yeah. pain in the butt. But it do, like pollen does get trapped in your hair. So I do think kind of rinsing every single evening after being out in, in the pollen filled air. Closing your windows. Changing your clothes. Bed sheets uh, Changing well. bed sheets. Uh, something that I find so good for when I am going out and about is also that physical barrier. So putting, you know, some... Um, like balm or like salve or ointment. Mm. I really like that, um, the lanolin balm, um, which technically is like nipple cream. <laughs> 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 I have just had a baby, so it's not weird that I have that. <laughs> um, but it's any sort of, you can like Vaseline or like anything like that, and you just put it on your nose. And so when you're out, the pollen sticks to that. And so you get a reduced intake up your nose. And then glasses as well that have a tight band. Like it does help. Physical um, barriers. The glasses do. Help. do. Do you know what's pretty funny, right? Do you know in, in India and like in they used to say Ayurvedically during allergy season mm -hmm. was to use mustard oil. Oh, God. They would, it, it, <laughs> it, and my mum did when we were kids. And I remember like... like Your mum did it when you were kids. You've done that to me. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I was trying to get away from that part of the conversation. You yeah. think I haven't had mustard oil shoved up my nostrils? <laughs> that was so Please. funny. <laughs> but the it does work though. It does, yeah, yeah, it does yeah. help. It's an alternative actually. Like if you don't yeah. um, have, you know, something like the Olive lanolin cream well, or whatever, do, yeah. any sort, like just go down to your kitchen, any sort of oil, like rub your rub your nostrils <laughs> with it. It, it, it. The thing is like showering, rubbing, like crank barriers is always important. Mm. But I think the main 
for me was as well was nettle tea. I nettle found, tea is good. I found yeah, nettle tea yeah, really interesting, yeah. right? But for, I'm, I don't want to bring it to nettle tea. Do you know what I want to talk about actually? Local honey. Mm. You, you know, like that's microimmune therapy mm-hmm. where you're exposing, is, is it a right, microimmune yeah, therapy? Yeah, 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 you're yeah. exposing the body to a little bit of honey. Of local pollen. Of local though. pollen, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But the only issue with that is this, right? You go abroad or you go to <laughs> you go to another city mm-hmm. or another place where the pollen's completely different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're screwed. So but also, but you are and you aren't because you may get unlucky. But actually, a lot of people find that when they travel abroad, their symptoms aren't as bad because they're yeah. allergic to their local pollen. But the UK is different, yeah. I think. Though. And also, I think it's important on the honey piece because mm. I did that when I was a kid. Mm. And I do, like, I've read the research and I do think think in theory there's value to it if you're getting proper like local and it has to be raw honey i'm going to get in trouble uh recommending that but um and yeah it has to be local to your area like pollinated with the trees that you you are surrounded with and so in theory i think that that can be great but in practice, that's something that really needs to be started very, very early in the season and yeah. for a, a long, long time. Like I would say even like I'm going to get in trouble for saying like, you know, even a few years to kind of build up your your tolerance to that. Oh, and I really? think, well, j- this is in my experience mm. and my my kind of, I guess, experience knowing also how these how these things work yeah i think it's a great additional therapy Mm. and probably a good point of call for people that have mild hay fever but if you have severe hay fever like i'm talking about the people that like literally ice streaming or you bring a bunch of flowers into the house and you're literally like red and blotchy and swollen within like 10 minutes like because that's that's my level of hay fever it's not going to make a massive difference you can do it additionally yeah but if you want to feel better in like allergy season and during the summer months then there's a lot of other things you need to be doing first Mm. so that's all I'd say about that because I think you know there's lots of lovely um articles online in fact you'll probably find a few online that have my name to it that um you know point out kind of all of these different things that you could like natural remedies for hay fever and things like that and all of them do have a place, but I think you need to understand yourself and your situation mm. because some of them will be relevant for, you know, mild hay fever sufferers. But if you're suffering really, really badly, then you, you're you either going to have to do a combination of them or you're going to need to go for the heavier hitters, which is managing your histamine load and I mean, obviously, from our perspective, and I'm a big fan of using a binder like Tox Prevent during those heavy months. Not like Tox Prevent, Tox Prevent. Well, Tox Prevent. <laughs> I mean, this this is the thing. Like when you kind of get into the histamine and allergy realm, looking at hay fever, mm. preventative and being and being preventative is the best medicine for it. Mm. And I can't stress this enough. Like if you're suffering and you know you're going to suffer with allergies Mm -hmm. you need to detox histamine because it's your immune system that's overreacting to pollen because it thinks Mm -hmm. it's bad Mm -hmm. and because it's thinking it's bad it's literally ting in the body and saying right release histamine yeah yeah, attached to that yeah we're under (laughs) attack and it's triggering those symptoms because you gotta remember when you're crying and you're sneezing that's your body, that's a histamine response and your body's trying to push the pollen out your system. So if you're sneezing and if you're crying, don't stop it. Yeah, let yeah, your body yeah. go through that that hate, that sneezing attack or whatever it is and let your eyes feel stream. Feel your feelings. Yeah, like feel your feelings. <laughs> but like no, it's, 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 it's true, but it's, it means that your body's trying to get rid of the pollen into it. But it also means, all right, if you're getting that attack, go wash your face. Yeah, go, yeah, go yeah, yeah, wash your face. Yeah, and then be preventative. Like, Toxic prevent is a game changer mm-hmm. for seasonal allergies because of the fact that it reduces the histamine load in the body mm-hmm. and it frees up the natural like the natural um antihistamine that's based in the body, which mm-hmm. is called HLMT, mm-hmm. which is the natural enter that breaks down HMT in the muscles and tissues mm-hmm. that will then break it down mm-hmm. so it kind of gives that freedom don't get me wrong it's not going to completely get rid of allergies but what it 
I found it just personally, and what a lot of people found personally, is that it reduced the, the how long the ad- allergies mm-hmm. last for. Like I said, I get hate fever at the start. Like I still get it, and but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Well, that's what I was gonna say. So, like, I think if you're not, if you're coming at allergy season from a place where you have a significant histamine overload, um, you're you're already going to be at a deficit. So you're probably going to head in and not have, you know, there's not going to be much out there that's going to be able to kind of make you be completely symptomless if you're going in um, in that sense. But I think I think both of us have gotten to a place with our hay fever where, you know, I would say we're in the very mild category of of sufferers, whereas both of us were in the severe category. So I think that in and of itself is pretty amazing. And I would say that's mainly through kind of healing our bodies. So, you know, how we eat, what we expose ourselves to in the environment, all of the different things that that we talk about. Um, But that's when we're maintaining those kind of practices so when we're staying away from you know dairy as a food for both of us that um definitely it's we both have like a mild man. no no, no. ice cream be delicious i know, I Girl, know. That ice cream be delicious <laughs> but like that's <laughs> what i'm saying so you know we've done our you know histamine overload tox prevent protocol we've done all of the the groundwork and so it means that actually unless we're literally sitting in the middle of a field Mm. um, during the summer, generally speaking, we don't really need to take or do anything. However, Mm. I'm going to be real. What I love about Toxic Revent is the fact that I'm now in a position that even in the height of hay fever season, I can go and sit in the park with my friends have, you know, a glass of wine, have a picnic, go and have an ice cream, like do all of those lovely summer, like fun things, sit in the back garden and have a barbecue. And I can do that and be totally fine because Mm -hmm. those are all the things, by the way, that trigger histamine in me, white wine, um, dairy, anything like that. But I can actually do that now. And how I do that is I take, I know that it's going to happen. So I yeah. take my tox for event, yeah. go do the biz, which is awesome. Enjoy my wine, enjoy my bits, sit out in the sun, not be scared of grass. <laughs> um, and then when I come back in, you know, I take my tox for event again and I'll go and I'll shower and I'll dutifully wash my hair, which is a pain, but it is what it is. And I feel fine put on the air purifier to like cover ourselves extra and like it makes it a choice instead of and so it like brings the power back to you because it's like okay I know that I'm about to sit out in a pollen filled atmosphere for the next you know five hours but I'm choosing to do this Mm. and I have a protocol in place I mean protocol literally throw a sachet in my bag and I can just throw it in water and have it but I have the measures in place that I know I will be okay. And for me, that's so worth it. It's actually made summers fun again Mm. because I don't want to be dramatic, but when you're severely suffering, like summer sucks. Mm. 